this lever can become damaged if someone's forced the shutter. That's certainly a possibility. So we'll just pop that back in place. So I can't really notice any distortion on that. Pop that bush back in place. Drop the screw in. Turn the screw down gently. Hook my spring into position. Run that screw down a little bit further. Check the action of the lever. That's good. I'll nip that screw up. And the lever is still nice and free in its action. And I think that the change in the shape of the spring up at this point was mostly to be mostly what did that. That's good. That works fine. <coughs> I'll put a touch of molybdenum paste on the lever where it latches this back in place, holds the blades open, that happens in the T, T position. That seems fine. A shutter release lever here needs to go in. Like any component that gets pushed and pulled by people, it's vulnerable to a little bit of uh, distortion as people push on it. And when it doesn't want to move, push even harder. So sometimes these are bent. I'm just putting a smear of molybdenum through the pivot. And some on the these little fingers here. Just checking the action of this. It is free on its spring, on its rivet, that's fine. Now I can swing this into place. Now there's no return on the shutter release button itself. The re that action, its return spring, happens on this lever here. So all I'm doing is working this backwards and forwards and you can see that this is on the T setting effectively. Move the shutter once, it opens the blades. You move the, the shutter release button again, it closes the blades. That's all good. This lever. I'll give that a quick clean. This lever releases the shutter if you're using the plunger on the shutter or if you had a cable release in that position. So a tiny spear of molybdenum in the pivot and a little bit just on that rounded end there where it runs into the shutter release lever. Now we also here we want our high speed spring. A 500th of a second spring. I'll just put a tiny smear of molybdenum paste under that. That drops in over its post. This piece has to hook under there. I'll 
onto its pivot just back where you were attach the pivot get the spring tucked in That spring tucks down into a groove in the case. That's better. That's our return spring for the shutter release button. That's working smoothly. This piece. This is the post that our plunger shutter release plunger or a shutter release cable would screw into it's held in position with a single countersunk headed screw to get this into place hold the shutter release in the open position so hold it down with your finger slide this in from the case on the outside line up the hole drop that screw into place through the hole and do that screw up. We can get it to uh, line up. There we go. Nip that screw up. If we were to put the plunger back in place, you can see the action of that plunger. Now I'll put a tiny smear of molybdenum on that ball end of that plunger. Screw this into place. You can see as I press on that, the tip of the plunger acts on this lever, which opens and closes the shutter. You can see it's red of cotton there, I'll get rid of that. It's better. So that's moving nice and smoothly. What tends to happen is that the ball end on the shaft of this plunger can get a bit of a flat on it and it doesn't want to roll smoothly on this um, arm. And it, particularly at the bottom of the stroke, the geometry can be such that it just tends to jam there rather than returning. Like that, exactly like that. It's more of a problem when you're playing with the B and T speeds, when you've got one of the instant speeds going, the timed speeds, you only need to, to press the shutter a small amount, the release a small amount for the shutter to release. And so you don't um, push that plunger all the way down and you don't have a problem. But it's very common, there really is no cure to that. Uh, it's just something to be aware of. You could say it was a trap for the heavy-handed. Right, this little catch here. Just cleaning this to get rid of any unwanted old grease. And there's not an awful lot there. The post on this piece drops into that hole in the mechanism plate. It's right on the edge of a, a um, recess there, so it's easy to get that misplaced. I've got to get that arm around the right position, of course. That looks good. It's held in place with a single count countersunk head screw. That's good. That's all working correctly. 
the main lever that's just about ready to go in. Before I pop that in, I've got to clean it first and pop it in. I'm just going to put some molybdenum, molybdenum paste in a couple of spots here. One is on the top of this, this lever here. It re releases the pallets. On this lever here, On that surface, that's where the main where the main lever runs. On this lever that swings the uh, blade actuating ring, just on the inside edge of their shutter release lever there, so that when it picks up this cam it's nice and smooth that'll do the main lever let's have a look at this let's give this a wipe down remove the old grease there's usually plenty of grease on this part cleaning the outside surface and certainly getting some old grease off there the inside surface and outside diameter little tab up here and the uh, the head of the bird ball now the spring on this bird ball here is quite fine and uh, be careful not to damage it there's usually no need at all to be disassembling this part and I suggest you don't you'll end up making a mess of that spring and you'll you'll be looking around for a new main lever so some molybdenum paste inside of the ring that's where it runs around the lens tube the outside of the ring Here's where the catch is that holds the shutter in the cocked position. Where's our tab here? This tab here actuates the it runs against our retard gear train. A little bit on the beak of the bird pull, a little bit on that tab, just so it runs around its grooves in the body fine that should be enough and pop that back in the shutter that spring slides in under there now I'm pulling the lever back here the pallet lever back and swing that arm back out of the way that allows the main lever to drop in we're too far around here so that's jamming that is it yeah it is that's better it looks like it's in place making sure the high speed spring's not tucked away where it shouldn't be let's get that spring back in place yeah, bird paws not correctly positioned there that should just about be right spring hooks over the post just checking that that's it's free that that little catch is 
not trapped underneath that should just about be right now I want to clean this this is the shutter speed cam it looked quite marked but I can see that that's actually where the plate it's run through the plating at that point um, or it was just a fault in the plating it's nothing particularly serious this is actually quite clean so I'm just cleaning all those surfaces to get rid of any old grease dirt dust usual things run some molybdenum paste around the inside here's the cam for the shutter speed so I'll run some around there and some around there and the high speed spring that does our 300th of a second runs up against there and up against that groove there to be able to pop this onto the shutter make sure that the B lever and so forth is not tucked in underneath where is it? here it is tucked in underneath that's better so on B well that's T on the T setting on the B setting on the one second setting you can cock it that sounds nice and positive and the tenth of a second should be about there that sounds good too if you go right round to the three hundredth of a second setting you'll see that this spring here engages up with the speed cam at that point And that is, means that that lever is then under tension. That spring is under tension and effectively it provides an extra impetus in order to move the shutter. We'll be down on the one hundredth of a second speed here. Fiftieth. 25th, 10th, 5th, half, now the half sounds a bit slow, and the one second, possibly a bit slow, I'll test that, that's pretty much it for the moment, I've got to test those speeds, but I want to put the cover on before I do that, so I'll clean the cover there's not much dirt on there, a little bit of dirt a little bit of uh, evidence of corrosion, a little bit of verdigris there swing this into place Revolve that into position. Revolve the lock. I still didn't get the right tool for that. That's good. Swing a little Kodak nameplate badge across tighten down the screw it's not picking up, am I too far around? yes that's better tighten up its friend
I'll test that on the shutter speed tester and if it doesn't need any work and I suspect it doesn't then we'll be better clean and put the lens back in there and put this back on the camera body. Well our shutter speeds are good, bang on the money so we should be good to go I think. Cleaning the lens. The rear group. I'll start with this. First I'll just run around the body of the rear group with a bit of naphtha to remove any old oil and grease that's um, found its way in there. You can see there's a little bit there. Now I'll need my glass cleaner these are uncoated lenses of course just cleaning the inside surface And the outside surface, the outside surface is more marked. Start with another cotton bud. Just inspecting this closely. The inside surface looks quite good. There's a bit of discoloration on the outside surface. Um, old glass often develops its own coating uh, as a result of. Uh, reaction with the atmosphere presumably and you often get a mottled effect, a slightly mottled effect like in some cases it looks like that there's a problem with your coating in some places when well, practice of course the coating was never there originally it's appeared since and so it's not unexpected that it might be a bit patchy looking And that's certainly what I'm seeing is, is like a coating, but it's um, you, you think of it as a bit of a motley coating, not a particularly good example of coating. And that's because originally it wasn't coated. Now this front group, I'll clean the inside surface. Sometimes you need to disassemble these to get to one of the inner surfaces here. But if you don't, leave well enough alone. I'll pop that on the shutter body. It makes it easier to handle. I need to turn my attention to the, the front surface which is very, very dirty. So look at that. You see that black rubbish on the top of that? Remember this uh, camera, the front wouldn't close up because the struts were very badly damaged. So this lens has been, I've never seen one as filthy as that in a long time. It's disgusting. So it's picked up an awful lot of filth. Hopefully that's all it is. Um, in a case like that, 
when the lens is obviously very filthy, people are encouraged to uh, clean it with their finger, which of course just tends to grind in any dirt and dust and create a permanent problem. There was still dirt coming off of it. Just cleaning around that name ring and the filter mount too while I'm at it so I'm not transferring dirt from there back onto the lens. It's, with uncoated lenses in particular, sometimes it's hard to uh, hard to judge how clear they are because you you'll certainly get more more problems with reflected surfaces in there. I'm just got the shutter open on the B the T setting at the moment, so I can see straight through. So I'm checking by reflected light and by transmitted light to get a, an indication of how clear that lens is. I can see a fingerprint etched on the front of that glass. Um, I doubt that's going to move. It means that probably The chemicals in someone's perspiration has just etched its way into the front of the glass or possibly just the the natural coating that you get on old glass. I can certainly see the rainbow shimmer of the uh, sort of coating. Now, I think that's as good as it's going to get. I think that's adequate. And I'm quite sure if that is on the camera, and particularly if a lens hood is used, that there will be no problem. Our retaining ring. Just run around that with some naphtha on a cotton bud. It's quite a solid looking retaining ring. The earlier retinas had quite a solid retaining ring. Afterwards they were made much thinner in cross section. So Shutter and camera body. Place the retaining ring in from the back.
which is sometimes easier said than done. It's not uh, dropping down into place correctly. That looks better. See if I can rotate that into position. And just try engaging the tool, see if that'll do it. Yeah, it's running up. Yeah, it certainly doesn't self-center to any great extent. That looks good. Now getting the alignment of this right, there's no pin to hold it in one position. You basically have to position it and then tighten it up. And you can line up on your infinity mark against the line here. And also that's repeated here of course. If I hold the shutter firmly engage the tool. I should be able to tighten that up. Sometimes there's a bit of toing and froing involved in tightening it without it simultaneously rotating the shutter in the body as I just did then. I'll just do this off camera. Right, how did I get on? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's a bit reluctant to move. Why was that? My shutter must be off centre slightly in there. Yes, I'd say that's what it is because focus doesn't want to move correctly. Okay. Check the action, that focus is smooth, check my alignment, my alignment is not perfect. Yeah, does that look? Now I want to be around a bit further.
my alignment is good my focus is nice and smooth I think that'll do us diaphragm setting is nice and smooth set it to a tenth cock the shutter that looks good so one last look at this retaining ring make sure I've got that up, up snug yeah that's not going to move as I said when you've got it on the high speed you've got the extra string it's spring involved when you go to cock the shutter that will tend to revolve the shutter in the case so it's important that the retaining ring is back done, done up firmly in this case it all appears to be good there's a hundredth of a second that's good so a final wipe over I think and then this, this camera can go back to its owner now that the uh, struts are all back in place and working correctly it should be good thanks for watching